These scientists are headed 300 miles off the Galapagos Islands to a place known as 86 West. But the ultimate destination is a mile and a half below the ocean waves. There on the seafloor is an unexpected oasis, fountains of warm water, and basking in it, bizarre animals. Biologist Tim Shank from the Woods Hole Oceanographic Institution and geologist Steve Hammond from NOAA, the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration, are the chief scientists on this expedition. They are on a mission, backed by the National Science Foundation and NOAA, a mission to explore a mystery that began a generation ago. In February of 1977, National Geographic Explorer-in-Residence Bob Ballard and a team of scientists were sailing off the Galapagos Islands when they spotted them. Hydrothermal vents. And all around them, alien creatures the likes of which had never been seen. We had thought prior to that discovery that all life was based upon the energy of the sun through the process of photosynthesis, that the sun was the life-giving power to, to Earth. Well, here was a system that was living independent of the sun. It was living in total darkness, not drawing its energy from the sun, but from the Earth itself through a process we now call chemosynthesis. In chemosynthesis, bacteria absorb chemicals in the vent water to make organic carbon, or food. The discovery of these ecosystems in the hydrothermal vents was very important because it told us that life can thrive not just grow a little bit, but actually thrive in the absence of light. This initial encounter with this new exotic world was not enough. Ballard and others would come back to the Galapagos again two years later in 1979. This time they found a vent neighborhood, more abundant than the first. They called it the Rose Garden. Scientists believe the only way to really understand these alien worlds is to visit them again and again. Imagine if you just saw a winter time somewhere and you saw tree, trees without leaves, right? And you came back a year later in winter time and you saw trees without leaves, you would say, trees never have leaves, right? But if you come back in the spring and in the summer and in the fall, you'll see that these things become full of leaves, the leaves change and then they fall off and there's a dynamic biological process that goes on and it's that sense of understanding that we have yet to have at vents, understanding event animals, and that's what we have to do.